Hello everyone. Here we talk about simple interest. When money is in business situation, the money value always increases with time going forward. The extra part gained from the original value after a certain time period is called interest. If the interest is only calculated once from beginning to the end, the interest is called simple interest. We use the following notations. The capital I represents interest. Lowercase r represents annual interest rate, and the capital P represents principal or present value. Lowercase t represents the length of the time period. Simple interest is simply calculated as principal multiply annual interest rate multiply time period t. Here we need to pay attention. Time period must be represented by year since we are using annual interest rate in this expression. So no matter what kind of time units is using, when we apply this formula, we must switch the time unit into year. There are some alternative formats from this original interest expression. We can solve principal as interest divided by RT. We can also solve annual interest rate come from interest divided by pt and we can also get time period between present value and future value can be solved as interest divided by pr when we add interest together with principal it gives us mature value or it's called future value so we can simply use s reprint mature value or FV represents future value, PV represents present value. So we have S equals P multiply 1 plus RT, or FV equals to PV multiply 1 plus RT. So this is the formula called the solving future value. If we switch them around, we can come out the formula for solving present value. So P equals S divided by 1 plus RT, or we can use the alternative way, multiply 1 plus RT with the negative 1 as exponent. Similarly, we can replace the symbol by PV and FV. Let's look at some examples. Example 1, we try to get familiar with switching time units. We switch 6 months, 16 months, and 218 days to years. When we switch 6 months to years, we basically look at the relationship between months and year. So 1 year equals 12 months. So we use 6 divided by 12 give us half year. And similarly, we use 16 divided by 12 give us 1.333 repeating all the time years. We take the standard using 1 year equals 365 days. So we can switch 218 days by dividing 365 give us 0 0.597 years. Generally speaking, when we switch one time unit to another time unit, we need to use the relationship between the two time units first. The relationship is about how many smaller time units are equal to one bigger time unit. If we change the bigger time unit to smaller time unit, we do multiplication. If we change the smaller time unit to bigger time unit, we do division. For example, four and a half years, 4.5 years, we switch to quarter by multiply four, 
give us eighteen quarters, since one year equals to four quarters. Eighty-four days we switch to weeks, by dividing seven give us twelve weeks, because one week equals to seven days. Example two: Calculate the amount of interest for the following situation. Part A: thirty-six hundred dollar at six point two five percent annual interest rate for one year. So we apply this formula: I equals P R T. Put all the information in properly. Thirty-six hundred dollar. Six point two five percent. For convenience, doing calculation, we put in decimal number directly. Multiply one year. So here, one year is there. We don't have to switch. Come out answer two hundred twenty five dollar as the interest. Part B, five thousand two hundred forty dollar at four point five percent annual interest rate for nine months. So we put five two four zero, principal, and zero point zero four five, annual interest rate, and then put nine. We need to switch to year. One year we have twelve months, so we plug in nine divided by twelve. Finish this calculation. Give us one hundred seventy six dollar eighty five cents. Part C. One thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars sixty cents at three percent for two hundred fifteen days. So we put the information in. Here we notice two hundred fifteen days switch to year by dividing three hundred sixty-five. We finish calculation. Give us interest thirty-three dollar ninety-nine cents. Part D. Seven hundred eighty-five dollar ninety-five cents borrowed at eight percent from January thirty, two thousand thirteen, until March twenty-first, two thousand thirteen. So here we need to figure out the time period between January thirty and March twenty-first. So which give us. Fifty days in between, so we put the information in seven hundred eighty-five dollar ninety-five cents. Multiply zero point zero five. Multiply fifty divided by three hundred sixty-five. Give us the answer eight dollar sixty-one cents. In Excel, if you put the date in cell directly, you can simply use subtraction. From what value in one cell, subtract the value from the other cell, and give you the days in between. It is very convenient. Example three. We have following conditions, and we do each part. Part A. What principal will earn interest of eighteen dollar twenty cents at three point two five percent in eight months? So we use this alternative format. We are looking for principal. So I divided by R T. We put the information in. We should recognize all the information properly and put them in the formula properly. Give us eight hundred forty dollar as principal. Part B: Find the annual rate of interest required for seven hundred forty-four dollar to earn fifty-four dollar twenty-five cents in ten months. So here we're looking for annual rate, which is lowercase r. So the alternative formula r equals i divided by p t. We put the information in. Seven hundred forty-four dollar is recognized as principal. Fifty-four dollar twenty-five cents as interest. Ten months switch to year by dividing twelve, and give us answer eight point seven five percent is the annual interest rate. Part C. 
determine the number of the months required for a deposit of thirteen hundred twenty dollar to earn sixteen dollar fifty cents interest at three point seven five percent. So from the information we have, principal, we have interest, we have interest rate. We're looking for time period. Determine number of the months. So we put all the information in. We need to pay little attention to this detail. When we use the formula, we come out the answer about T. We should have something in mind. You need to understand the answer for T, what kind of time units being carried. Since we explained T must be year. So when you come out the answer about the T, the answer also represents years. So in that case, give us 0 0.333, 3 is unlimited repeating, so this many years. So we switch this number to months, that's the question asked for, by multiply 12, give us the answer 4 months. Part D, for how many days would a loan of $1,500 be outstanding to earn interest $36.16 at 5.5%. This is a similar like part C. We just need to put all the information in properly. So give us, again, this question asks for how many days. So when we come out of the answer, the number represents years. We need to switch this to days by multiplying 365. Give us about 160 days. You can always round up for the question asking how many months, how many days, and you round it up for the number if you have decimal. Example 4. Find the future value of an investment of $720 earning 4% for 146 days. We can use the future value formula directly. We have principal, we have annual interest rate, and we have time period. We put them in properly, finish this calculation, give us a future value $731.52. Example 5. Find the future value of a deposit of $1,250 invested at 2.75% from October 15, 2012 to May 1st. 2013. Similarly, we have principal, we have annual interest rate, and we have time period. But here, time period, we need to figure out how many days in between. That's a little extra. The formula would be same. So we figure out in between the two dates, we have 198 days. Switch this 198 days to year by dividing 365. Finish this calculation, we come out mature value $1,268.65. Example 6. Compute the value of an investment 8 months before the maturity date that earns interest at 6% and has a mature value $880. So in this question, we read out the information, mature value, and we have interest rate, and we have 8 months time period. Question looking for the value of an investment at the beginning, that is the present value, or we call the principal. So we do have the formula as well. 
we put the information in properly, finish the calculation, get answer $850. Or we use the alternative way, alternative format of the formula, finish the calculation, we get the answer. We put this one here, just to be prepared in the future if you want to learn compound interest. Get used to this kind of expression with exponent. In simple interest situation, we don't necessarily need to use this format, but from here we can get familiar with. In compound interest, we are going to have to use this kind of format. Example 7. What sum of money must be invested on January 31st, 2012 to amount to $7,500 on August 18, 2012 at a 5% annual interest rate? PA means per annum. Again, we are looking for present value or principal. Here's the formula we need to use, and we put information in properly. $7,500, which is happening at the end, it is recognized as future value or mature value. 5% interest rate, and from the dates January 31st to August 18, we can figure out the days in between is 200 days. Finish this calculation, we have principal $7,300. Or we can use alternative way. For this situation, if you try to operate in calculator, that's the way you do. At the bottom, we show you again for the two part situation, and you can operate your calculator in the way exactly showing on the screen. When you try to use exponent, yx, that's the exponent symbol on the button on calculator. Of course, if you can use Excel, and you use Excel would be much quicker than operating calculator. So you can finish this calculation in Excel very conveniently. See you next time.